Coming up on the paper talk today, we'll be looking at potential takeover bids for Manchester United. Who means what when it comes to buying this club? We'll also be looking at title talk. Is there any title talk? A bit of post-match reaction. That a couple of people from United and the manager and a player were asked about a title race. Are we really in it? Let's go and see what they were saying. Jay here from Stratford Paddock, this is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford. It's a bit grim, the weather, but I'm feeling good after yesterday's positive result. And if you're wondering, my parker is on the floor because I've been walking quite fast to get here, so I'm a bit warm. Anyway, let's get into it. Lots of stories to go through this morning. Some of them, well, most of them, focusing on the takeover bid, where we're at with that. There's even a few stories that there could be a lifeline for the Glazer family to continue their ownership of Manchester United. Hopefully that's not true, but we'll get into that. We'll also talk a little bit about the reaction from yesterday's game. Big week coming up for Manchester United, the Carabao Cup final at the weekend. But before that, we've got the small matter of the Barcelona game. So we'll look at that as well. Um, some of the reaction from yesterday, Marcus Rashford achieving his personal best for a season. I think it's 24 goals now for Manchester United this season. And we're only in February and we had a World Cup in the middle of the season. Pretty phenomenal. He's on fire and again, banging in the goals yesterday. It's great to see. He's absolutely shining. We still not put pen to paper on a new contract though yet, uh, but one of the stories doing the rounds, I think it's from Ornstein in The Athletic, is that regardless of who comes in as the new owner, that shouldn't affect contract negotiations or a new deal for Marcus Rashford. I mean, that's the ultimate no-brainer in it. You have to get Marcus Rashford to sign a new deal. Or you have to offer him a new deal because regardless of who comes in, the first thing you're going to look at is, you know, who's, who's my best players, what squad have I got? And he's top of that list. So... Get him signed. Let's keep Marcus Rashford here at Manchester United because the way he's playing at the minute, I think he's he is at this current moment in time for me the best attacker in the league, best attacker in the world. I'd say now people might look and go, well, early in Ireland, but post World Cup, who's been scoring more goals? Marcus Rashford. So that's my take on it. Anyway, get involved in the chat and the comments and let us know what you think. Just on the small matter of the title race, dare we whisper it? Is anyone going to say it? Are you saying it at home? Is it coming? I'm saying nothing. Uh, Marcus Rashford was asked about it and he said, obviously we are there, we are close. At the same time, both teams in front of us are really good teams and they are playing good football at the minute as well. So he's not really saying too much on that. He's been a little bit sort of sitting on the fence with it, which I understand because you can't go, oh, yeah, well, this is it. We're going to win the league now because that'll look ridiculous. But you don't want to go, well, we're completely out of it. There's no chance. What chance have we got? Because that will look a little bit negative. So I understand why he's been slightly coy. I get it. Um, now, before we worry about the league, we've got the Carabao Cup. And before that, we've got Barcelona game. But in terms of the Carabao Cup final, Newcastle are in a bit of a pickle. It's a shame, isn't it? Um, because they've got a goalkeeper crisis. This is called it Sky Sports. Loris Karius, who's literally one of my favourite ever Liverpool players, uh, or Mark Gillespie, who I've literally never heard of, could start the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United. Martin Dubravka is cut tied because he played for us in the Carabao Cup, didn't he? Hey, and if we win, he could get a medal, which is nice. I wonder if they'll let him come up with us if we win. Um, also, Nick Pope got himself sent off against the Scousers at the weekend, which is nice of him. So he's suspended for the final. So they've got to go with either Karius or Gillespie. I am being a little bit facetious, so we say. And I, I'm always sort of conscious of the fact that sometimes United play against these goalkeepers you've never heard of or you've almost forgot about and they have absolute worldies. So that could happen. Mark Gillespie could become, you know, a, a prime Edwin van der Sar against us. So I'm not counting my chickens on that one. But there's no doubt that Newcastle have been weak and Nick Pope's such a big player for them. It does leave them a little bit weak at the back, which is what, from a United point of view, you want to see. Um, now, should we talk about bids, takeover bids. Loads of stories doing the rounds. Sky was saying, um, I think it was this morning, that Sir Jim Ratcliffe bids for 69% of the club as Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim Bil bin Jabba Al -than Thani, I hope I got that one right, attends Old Trafford Games. Now this is the sort of PR thing that's going on here as well, because you've got Sir Jim Ratcliffe going, bone and bread mate, let's bone down the road from Old Trafford in Failsworth, even though it's not quite down the road, but you know what I mean. I'm, as mank as they come, don't worry about it. Uh, and you've got the other lad, whose name I'm not going to repeat, saying, United? I've loved United for years. You used to go to United games all the time. It's always in the Stratford End, mate. You can't move for seeing me in the Stratford End. Uh, so they're doing this sort of PR thing about how the bowl fans. There's different issues around either bid. Now, one of the issues has been what's happening with the debts. And it looks like, regardless of whether it's a Jim Ratcliffe or it's a bid from Qatar, the debts won't be carried on at Manchester United. One, I think the, the lad from Qatar said he's going to wipe the debts. Jim Ratcliffe saying he won't keep the debts, um, he won't keep the, the debts 
under the club's banner or whatever, or the club won't still have the debt. So his his company could absorb the debts, I think. So you're not going to keep the debt at Manchester United, which is a big sticking point for a lot of fans. There's question marks about what's going to happen in terms of rebuilding the stadium, the infrastructure, the training ground, both of them making sort of noises that they're going to do that. I think the Qatari bid is more concrete. We are going to do this, this and this. So Jim Ratcliffe has been more like, I am. my intentions are to... to re-ramp the stadium or rebuild the stadium and do what needs to be done I don't know how sort of set in stone those promises are but we'll wait and see because there's loads of stories going to be doing the rounds there's also stories doing the rounds in several papers that the Glazers are unhappy with some of the PR that's being spun around their ownership from these potential bidders who are sort of making out like well the Glazers have you know left the club to go to rack and ruin and we're going to come in and save it but the Glazers have left the club to go to rack and ruin and if it wasn't for the genius of Sir Alex Ferguson and some other managers who've sort of done really well we wouldn't have won any trophies during the Glazer uh, family ownership you can look at it and go oh well you spent money we've also fallen way, way behind our rivals during that time I know we're getting a bit closer now the, the um, yes bro <laughs> We've also got a stadium that's falling apart, a training ground that's not really fit for purpose. I mean, come on, you can see what's going on, you can see what needs to be done. And we've still got this debt, I think it's 550 million net debt. How has that happened when they've been here for 18 years? I thought they were going to get rid of it, that's what they promised when they came in. So yeah, lots of issues to sort out. There's a few sort of twists and turns expected with this. Now one worrying story during the rounds this morning is the fact that the Glazers could be offered a lifeline to stay at Manchester United. It seems like there's a group that are willing to offer them the chance to keep their ownership of Manchester United with you know some sort of funds or whatever, or some sort of takeover. That's not what you want to see. You want to see Manchester United being owned by someone else. Now, there's questions around whether Jim Ratcliffe is using it for greenwashing. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently to sort of give himself some good PR because of the environmental issues his company have. There's also sports washing questions that come with any bid from a sovereign state, although the Qatari chap is saying that he's not a member of the Qatari ruling family or whatever. Again, we can go into that in more detail further down the line. But one thing we don't want is the Glazers staying at Manchester United. I think that would be a disaster. Gary Neville spoke on that as well. He said... I still think there is focus that there isn't one big, this isn't one big charade that the Glazers are running to try and establish a value, which would be for their brothers and sisters to exit and the couple that want to stay in to stay because there's two that want to stay. There's a priority at this moment in time for them to go. We've got to have the Glazers out. We've been here before. We've been here for the last 18 years. We protested in 2005 onwards. We don't want the Glazers to stay. This doesn't want to be one of those where it's like, well, actually, there's some funds available now and we're going to stay and all this, that and the other. That would be horrendous and I think you'd see more protests outside Old Trafford and online of course as well if the Glazers did try and pull a fast one and stay. Uh, just another couple of ones as well David De Gea broke the record, oh sorry he equaled Peter Schmeichel's clean sheet record yesterday very good game for David De Gea yesterday um, so it's great for him to see that as well uh, for, great for him to reach that uh, landmark as well and just on the title race that I mentioned earlier Eric Ten Hag spoke about it and he said we don't think about the title race we think about the next game Thursday is going to be the big game for us we have to fight our fans to make Old Trafford a fortress and the game plan has to be right I love it as well at the final whistle yesterday Eric Ten Hag he was pointing at the fans and he was like this and when he was asked about that he was saying that you know it's it's it's, a, it's about us as a club and the fans as well beating Barcelona on Thursday. The fans have got their part to play. I'm paraphrasing there, but you know what I mean. So that's great to say. I just love Eric Tanag. He's just great, isn't he? Uh, anyway, massive game coming up. Massive week coming up, I should say, with two big games. We'll have you covered. We'll have the watch-alongs, the previews, the reactions, all that stuff. We've got reactions from yesterday, so go and check them out on the channel. I've also got a vlog for the members that's going up on my trip to Barcelona. So you can go and check that out if you're a member. If you're not a member, go and have a look at the member section. But regardless of whether you remember or not, make sure you are subscribing to the channel. I'm Jay Motte. This has been the Paper Talk outside Old Trafford. Thanks for watching.